a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll wait for her to make her appearance and then I can um, thank you so much for resending her the link. Uh, I, I, I want to be able to see her face before I start or maybe I'll just I'll give a little bit of a background and then she can provide some more information. Um, Dr. Connie Jordan is joining us today. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jordan. Uh, she is the principal of the uh, Academy of Girl, the Girls Leadership Academy here in Arizona, obviously an organization that is uh, very important to us. Uh, Paula has taken the lead in doing a lot of the programming for that. And I know a lot of our members have participated um, and it's been a wonderful, amazing experience for everybody who's been able to make it. I'm hoping to one day be able to make it when I'm not at work. Uh, but just to give a little bit more information, she received her BA from the University of Central Missouri, MA from Arizona State University, and her PhD in education, specialization, organizational leadership from North Central University. That sounds pretty amazing. I don't even know what that would mean, but it scares me. Um, so I'm going to actually turn it over to Dr. Jordan and she can speak a little bit and then people have questions that would be fabulous. Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us and uh, thank you for uh, dealing with uh, what if we sent you the wrong link, which would have been me. Yeah. Uh, no, you probably did just fine. I just, uh, I didn't take it over and put it into my calendar. So it's all good. I'm here. <laughs> Um, I want to make sure I stay on task, uh, and I, I have so many things I want to say as always, and I think I want to just talk, am I, is it okay if I'm, I'm speaking to probably where we are now to, from the, from the pandemic, from everything that we've just been going through, um, what does it look like in school today for us, if, if that's okay, I want to kind of start from there. So as you know, we went from having live instruction, hands-on, just full collaboration and learning, and abruptly we go to a screen for over almost two years. And honestly, this recovery time, I, we're still in it. We're just still in it. Um, that was in 2020, it's now 2022. Some students, after they've come back, and obviously, like I said, we're back in live instruction, it is, it's a challenge. Getting them from home to school, they had classrooms in their bedrooms. Now I'm trying to say you're back in the building. You know, it's, even from, looking the part. We're not coming to school in our pajamas anymore. We need to get up, take a shower, wash our hair, get cleaned up and look more appropriate for being in the classroom. So when I tell you that we are starting from ground zero, from that aspect, we are. Now, grant you, I may have five or 10 girls that are not in that category, but a majority, a majority of them are. And it's it's just it's it's disheartening. At the same time, I'm trying to be understanding of it and I'm trying to fix it, but it's taking it, it's taking a lot. From a teacher perspective, I really want to kind of let you know about this too. <laughs> it's not too far from the student. It, it, it it's I have a good team, don't get me wrong, but they're they're teaching for, for those who have been teaching for years. Most of them stayed virtual. So either they didn't return or they took on a virtual teaching job because that environment fit them, I guess, after they had the experience and the training and see, oh, I can work from home, you know? I may not necessarily have to uh, do discipline conduct management in person versus a screen. So there's so many layers happening in our schools today. And obviously I'm speaking to, to our school. Um, I have new teachers who they won't, 
they don't know any different because they just came straight from college. So um, I got I got a variety package going on here <laughs> from a seasoned teacher to a teacher that has not been a teacher and they can't really compare virtual versus in on ground. Um, so I wanna just kind of open up this for discussion and, and conversational, not just me kind of, you know, talking and, and sharing as much as I want. Um, I'm open for questions and comments and suggestions as well. Um, if you're ask if if any of you are thinking about what needs we may have, one thing that I am noticing is honestly the basics. We need black pants. We need uh, the the uniform shirts purchased. Are you know they're repeating their their attire over and over again because they can only maybe afford one shirt and one pair of pants. So <clears throat> they're wearing that obviously every day. Um, so those are, I think those are my immediate needs is really trying to get the school to be, <laughs> we're small enough to look, operate private, look private, even though we're public, but we should be able to do that. And, you know, I want that crisp, cream, clean look. So when you walk into the school, you see the students and they're, they're feeling good about themselves and they're, you know, <clears throat> ready to learn but they gotta get those things taken care of first. So just really trying to take care of that. And I think everything else will fall into place, but right now we're still at that, that look and feel and trying to rebuild encouragement. I mean, it's all of the above ladies. It's, it's all of the above. Uh, Dr. Jordan, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, I, I had read somewhere, and one of the reasons I thought this would be interesting is that some of our children, a lot of our children, especially the ones who were already in, you know, um, disadvantaged backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, are pretty much stuck where they were educationally two years ago. Yes. It was such a failure, and especially if they didn't have you know, the parental resources. Um, you know, I know at least for me, I, I think I was doing like three kids at a time and I was losing my mind, um, but I was able to telework and I had a very understanding em employment. Um, right. You had a lot of other children who didn't have that right. um, and didn't have, or, you know, a, even a, a, a quiet space to do. So I had read that our children, for the most part, the ones who were already in a, not a great place to begin with, are just even stuck. So there's two years of educational, um, you know, possibilities or opportunities that have been lost. How can we go back and regain that? Or is it going to be like you said, just going to take time and we might not ever recover for these children? Um, very good points made. Here it is. We were already behind with most of our students academically. And the reality is, if you're if you are about to be a senior, say you're a senior, we cannot make up three years in one in ten months. It it it, it it's just it's just not going to happen. Now, I'm very positive thinking mindset. I'm a growth mindset. I read Carol Dweck's book. I got all that, but reality is. You can't make up three years in 10 months. We're going to have to push them out, but we do the best, the best, the best we can with the educational delivery within that time frame. Um, the recovery, I tell you, it, it requires teachers, dedication, commitment, numerous hours of extended, of extended work. Um, it's all, it, we're all in, all hands on deck. And this is where another opportunity where you can come into play. You come in, maybe you volunteer 20 minutes. I don't even say an hour anymore. 20 minutes is a, 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 enough time to teach a skill. It's enough time, a time to inspire and motivate a, one of our girls. And that's where we're at. I mean, we are, letter grades are out. We're a C school, thank goodness. But, you know, we, we're aiming to be a B next year. But with the past that we know about, 
I'm hoping we can sustain and see. So. So what kind of, are you talking about us coming in for like after school workshops um, can, to help read or to help with history or to help with math or what are you, what are you thinking that we could do for you? I am thinking of many things. It's so unlimited. So Mondays after school, we have our, our we call it the SEL club, social and emotional club. And we have speakers come and just talk about, you know, last week we had a lady come and do yoga. And then we had someone else come and just talk about their life story. Like I was here where you were, maybe not um, what the vir virtual learning, but I was in a point in my life where I was here, but I did these things and now I'm here. They need to hear that it's okay to feel, to, to what is it, fall forward, fail forward. It's okay because we all turned out okay. They don't, they don't have enough of those stories because their home life, their parents, you know, they have to work or they're not having these type of conversations because they're still trying to be successful themselves. So they don't hear enough success stories. So sometimes it's just coming in and talking, just talking to a small group of girls or listening. Maybe they need to just have someone make, you know, we have like three counselors in our schools now. We have three, I should, I should say counseling programs because one student feels like 10 and each day is different. <clears throat> So it's, um, I don't want to put parameters on it. I want, if you as an individual, whatever your area of expertise is, that's what I listen to. And then we make that fit. Because some people just, maybe it's health and nutrition. Okay, you know, these girls are still eating hot Cheetos. They're not eating right. I mean, maybe you have an expertise where you can come in and talk to them about, in our health and nutrition class, how that can impact you just eating right drinking enough water. I mean, these things don't think it's minimal. It's not. When I say we're at ground zero, we're at ground zero with, with, with clothing, with just life. Adversity is in its realness stage right now. And I'm not exaggerating. I, I You know me, I'm very straightforward, but I want you to understand that your presence just even if you pulled one student, right? Each one, reach one, that that motto, it works. It works because my staff go, we go home exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, I just had a 16 year old, just that's why I was running a little late too, <laughs> getting on the call. You know, she's 16. She's talking about, she wants to be emancipated and she wants to run away and she doesn't, she's not happy at home. And, you know, like, <laughs> That's just coming from one student about 20 minutes of my morning. And I got to try to fix that. But we also have 20 more with thoughts. You know, well, Dr. Jordan, I love how you said, hey, here's some like concrete stuff we could use, like clothes, help them feel prideful. And, yes. you know, that type of thing. That's really cool. The other thing, because because I work at State Farm and we're going through this in the workforce too, people don't want to come back and we're trying to come up with strategies to help them see the value of collaboration and connection, like personal connection. And it's so different when you're together in a classroom and you're able to see each other and you're able to play off of emotions and we're losing that. And it's, yeah. it is disheartening to see that teachers don't even want to come back either because it's easier. Is there anything that we can do or what are the things that you're doing to kind of help promote that collaborative environment and the value of being together? You know, you know how we get excited if we go to a conference or a training or something. I just think, how cool would it be? Now, I'm totally brainstorming right now. <laughs> But if we got all the girls and we went to some type of power hour, empowerment, you know, we're, I don't know, we're somewhere off the grounds and every woman are coming on stage saying, you know, you can be this, you can do that. I feel like we need that power hour. 
what that looks like, I don't know, but something inspirational and motivational and saying, you know, you too can do this. You too can, you know, anchor adversity. You too can be who you need to be. You know, we got the book clubs going. I mean, we're doing that too. We, you know, we got that in the place. So I are, maybe it's where you're coming here in our cafeteria mm -hmm. and we just have like six women just talking and inspiring and just uplifting, an uplifting day. Um, and, you know, again, Tammy, I'm, that's yeah. my immediate feel because I know that's, you know, we can do a podcast and we're probably happy. I mean, we, we know how to motivate us as, as adults, but students trying to find that level of motivation when it's not surrounding them, they don't have a, a cheerleader in their house. They come yeah. to school and we're trying to cheer them on. They're like, you know, <laughs> yeah. And I think the brainstorming that you're doing and just throwing out <laughs> ideas really helps us to okay. frame up dream it be it programs or there are different elements you yeah. can add yeah. and then even just for our members to look and go wow I do yoga I'm really good at health and nutrition those ideas I think could spark mm -hmm. some more action from our group too thanks yeah absolutely Lee you had a question yes Dr. Jordan is there a sports program in yes place yes when I tell you we are we we bring everything we even get ready to add chess club. And so I, again, you're talking to someone, I don't care if it's one girl in that chess club, guess what? That's what she wants. That's what she gets. That gets her motivated. I'm happy. So we're actually getting ready to start that chess club tomorrow with two girls, but that's two girls out of her, you know, 70 that are feeling okay. That, that, that's the way for me to save them and make them feel great. Yes. Um, basketball started this week. We just finished volleyball season. So that's our first game is Monday and uh, we're moving fast. Soccer is next. And um, those are actually actually competitive uh, sports. Softball, we're going to have it. It's not going to be competitive, but we're going to have it, you know, right. so just to keep them busy, keep them out of the house. I will say this. I don't know if I'm, you know, I have to leave my emotions out of it because I know they're doing it for the for their reasons. But I've noticed we have a multiple amount of girls now that are working. Mm -hmm. They're 16, that there are, some are sophomores and some are juniors. They're not even seniors. Well, the seniors are working, but it's trickled down. I don't know if COVID caused that, but now they are an income to the home. And it saddens me because I want you to be a high school student. You know, that's that the mom hat coming on, like I, you can't bring back these years and I want you to play basketball. I want you to be involved in all the sports and, and, you know, the clubs that we have, but they're going to work and they get a taste of that check. And now their absenteeism is declining because they stayed up at Fridays all night closing. And now they're not coming into school. So I'm noticing this is becoming a trend, an unfortunate trend, but I understand it because now they're trying to help the income because you, hey, we feel the gas prices. We, we all know the incline just in our world. Well, if they're not getting a salary increase or a wage increase and they're still where they were, they have their daughters working now to support the household income. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, it's, I have to be careful when I talk to them because they're like, well, we got to work. Like, I'm like, I know, but don't you want to play basketball? And it's just, it's hard because I want them to be teens, but they're having to grow up really fast. So, yes, Darlene, is that? Yeah, you know what? It um, as, as a parent who stayed many hours on fields watching my non-athletic daughter try to play things like basketball, um, it might be good if we had a list of, of the um, the games and things like that because sure. several of us live in the area and I would love to go see uh, them play softball or I would, you know, and Janine's shaking your head too and we, we okay. 
would love to go and, and watch and be cheerleaders for them. Oh, you just touched my heart. <laughs> I found it. two things. You, you, you got my mind. Um, our, our home gym, being that you're in the area, you all are, I'm sure, familiar with Arch. That's that's where we go and practice and play our games and things of that nature, right on Culture and 15th Ave. Um, but I will tell you a couple more needs now that we're talking out loud. In volleyball, we needed socks and ten, it, it's it's interesting and tennis shoes. I don't care if they're old or new. So if you know anyone that, uh, no matter what size, because they all have different sizes. But now that we're in basketball, you know we try to look uniformity as much as possible. But socks is a is a is a big is a need. Surprisingly, but yeah. <laughs> you know, Dr. Jordan, I, I think one of the differences that I'm seeing this year from last year is um, more connectivity between the girls. Mm -hmm. like, because the girls, I think from being virtual for a year last year, and some of them were virtual and some of them were in person, there wasn't that cohesiveness mm -hmm. of the group that I'm seeing this year. This year, they seem to be very cohesive. Mm -hmm. And last year, there were times when I felt kind of a hopelessness with yeah. some of the girls. And so I think that it sounds like a trivial thing sometimes for people to tell their stories and they're, you know, they're failing forward, but it really strikes these girls. I mean, it, it does lift them up. Um, and I want to tell you too, I took them to the University of Arizona Medical School on Tuesday. Um, and they were wonderful representatives of the school. And I'm gonna tell them that next week. They were engaged. They got to go to the simulation lab, which was hands-on, mm -hmm. but they loved it. And we had a wonderful physician, uh, a woman who was in, um, her parents had immigrated from Peru and she grew up in Detroit of all places. But she talked about, you know, failing forward and people saying, I don't think medicine is the right career for you and she said I just kept going one step at a time I just kept going mm -hmm. and it took me six years to get through yeah. to graduate but I just and you could see the girls really be engaged with her story and how she's these girls are no different than all of us well, <laughs> we, we've all failed forward <laughs> absolutely and and thank you so much, Paula, for seeing that in the comparison because you know I we we did a a 360 with my staffing. I got new people. We you know sometimes you got a clean house, right, uh, ladies? Sometimes and and we did just that, and that's our push: social and emotional learning and and being just true to who you are. And 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 I want to put emphasis on what Paula is saying: the medical trip. Listen. I say it to my girls all the time. You don't know what you don't know. You have to have the exposure. I, you know, some of them, I, I know I wanna be a veterinarian. That's what I wanna do, that's fine. But you still need to go on these trips because I've changed my career three times. You know, I thought in college, I was gonna be a speech pathologist. I'm like, oh, that's not gonna, you know, you know, I'm still learning how to talk myself. So I got out of that and went to educate, you know. so we highly, highly encourage them to go to these trips that are uh, put together by the Seroptimist because it's gonna get them to start thinking and, and processing and, oh, I can do that, especially after they hear the stories of the people that had a struggling life, but yet now they are a judge or now they are a doctor. It, they have to hear it. They have to see it. So thank you for seeing the change here. Um, we're, we're, we're striving for that all the time. Um, I will tell um, those of you who have been in the school, um, we are excited. Again, I um, <sighs> this has been in the making, but the broadcasting studio that we have implemented, wait, Paula, there's been change just since you've been here uh, last week. Um, that's going to be another segue for us. So those of you who have um, any skill sets or you know anyone in the media, the broadcasting journalism industry, um, we will have our own broadcasting studio on our floor. Because I want to push the importance of communication, public speaking, um, writing. There's so many layers in that 
in, in that program, in that field of work. And we do have a partnership with Walter Conkite, obviously at ASU downtown. So we've already had every student go tour that college. And um, so the wills are moving in that in that direction. If you want any more information on that, please, I encourage you to come and, and, and see our school on that part. Mary? Um, two points, I guess. Um, one question and one point. Um, Dr. Jordan, what motivates the girls to come to school? I mean, what is it that they get most excited about? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's an excellent question. You know, I, I really hope it's my staff, myself. I really do. Um, academics is academics. At the end of the day, <laughs> You got the students who love school and you got the school, the students that are just, they gotta be in school because that's just what they're supposed to do. Um, we, we, we really are present in the morning. We meet and greet our students outside. I mean, we are, we're, <laughs> we are, yes, uh, this, we're doing so many activities that we're hoping that that is striking their interest to stay motivated and want to come to school. We did uh, Ruby Bridges Day this week. You know, it was National Ruby Bridges Day from our historical teacher. She, I mean, she reminds of all reminds us of all these things. But we were able to get all the gear, and we actually went outside and did the activity, and we did the the walk with the sign. And you know, we we try to bring things alive, and you know, from each course. Um, another example is. There's, I don't know if you all know, familiar with Bright Studios. It's an art studio here on Camelback. And we partnered with them. I got a grant. We partnered with them. So now the girls who are interested, who are very artistic, once a month, they go to um, the, the art studio. And that, that was $6,000 that we got. That, that's not a cheap thing. And um, I encourage you to go and, and, and check it out. I think you might like it, but um, we're, we're constantly trying to find anything and everything to bring it to them or we take them there. And it, it's, and we, you know, we, we they know we, we, we genuinely care for them. Like we notice, like when they're not here, Mary, like I'll say, you know, Isabel, where were you yesterday? They're not used to that because we're so small, we can do that. So everybody, every student is different when it comes to that level of motivation to want to be in school. Obviously scholarships, and I, and I say that um, wholeheartedly um, for our seniors, you got to be in school. If you want to do these things, this is what's waiting for you. This is what's waiting for you. And we try to encourage that with, you know, anyone that wants to give a scholarship. And obviously I channel that because I want to make sure that your investment dollars or anyone's investment dollars is going to the student that I know is going to utilize that. Um, so it's, it really depends on the individual, Mary, and we try to stay in tune to them, each one. and make sure that we're meeting their needs. Like I can look at a student, Kaylee, she's excited about chess club tomorrow. Like she's excited, you know? <laughs> I'm happy to have the person that, I don't know how to play chess, that, that my brain doesn't, it's not wired for chess, <laughs> but um, we got a person to come in and do it. They're gonna come in 40 minutes on Fridays. Hey, guess what, Mary? I guarantee you Kaylee's gonna be at school every Friday now. So it just really depends on the, I don't know, Paul, like, you know how all of our students are just different in their own way. It really just depends on that individual. And I don't know if you can add to that, Paul, but I'm just, everybody's different. <laughs> yeah, we had a young lady on Tuesday and she's from the very beginning said, I'm going to be a veterinarian. And she wasn't all that excited about going to U of A because she's not really interested in medical school. Well, we went into one of the simulation labs where they have a simulator for laparoscopic surgery, where you have to put in the little cameras and move these items around. And there was a medical student in there kind of running the simulation lab. And this, 
student went in and she just started moving him, just went on top. And he said, I've never even seen a medical student do it that fast. <laughs> I mean, she just caught right on. And so even though she may not want, end up with medical school, I, she got some confidence that this was right for her and that, you know, she did, she was good at something that a medical student said, whoa. <laughs> He said, honestly, medical students can't pick that up that quickly. And she just did it right away. So, so it's that confidence building, I think. And just think if you didn't have that arranged for them to even experience that. And that's what I say. I, I, I love this about your organization. Those Tuesdays matter. I mean, mm -hmm. they're getting... I didn't have that in high school. I mean, they're getting all these things from speakers to the medical school to, I mean, you're bringing that exposure to our girls and that's huge. I mean, honestly, I'm very satisfied with everything that you're doing right now. If you want to add to that layer, you know, great. But your Tuesdays are, are very impactful. They're very impactful because they need to know what's going on in our world. And, you know, some of these mm -hmm. things, they don't, they, they just, it's not normal for them. And you're bringing that may be normal for us, but it's not normal for them because unfortunately their parents are working and they're not going to take them to a medical facility, you know, to have the exposure that they had last week well yeah. the the point i wanted to um offer is i wonder if a friend of mine was telling me about her son who um they arranged to get a scholarship to go to sal point in tucson and he didn't do so well his first year but because he wanted to play sports and they have a requirement that you have a certain grade point average to be eligible to play he is now a straight A student and doing very well because he wants to be on the sports mm -hmm. team. Um, and I'm just thinking, the other thing that we heard when we were looking around for a way to um, invest if, if impactfully in education was that um, there were many who wanted um, the opportunity to send their girls to something like Xavier Mm -hmm. um, something that would be a, a girls' school that had um, high status for them. They couldn't afford to send them to Xavier, but they wanted something mm -hmm. um, where they could be proud that they were sending their children right. to this. Right. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if we could use those ideas and maybe try to put together some kind of an internship program, given what you told us about the need for some of them to work. And I know it would be a lot of work and I'm, this is just an idea, but if we could line up internship opportunities that would provide some amount of a stipend to the girls um, participating where they would have to really be achievers, they'd have to be at school, yes. they'd have to participate. Um, they'd have to be on their best behavior, but they could be matched with a company where for a certain number of hours per week in their senior year, they could be interns and be paid to work in something that they that would be beneficial to them rather than flipping burgers at McDonald's or sharing ah. at fries. If that wouldn't be something that would be high status and really um, the kind of opportunity that would go along with being an academically oriented career building school that parents would want their children to go to and that the girls would really value. I need you in this building tomorrow morning. We need to start this plan because <laughs> that is exactly, that would be huge. I mean, wow. So here it is, our literature reads rigorous, right? So we're rigorous in our own way because we're trying to obviously become that competitive school. I would love nothing more to have that type of program in our school because do I believe we can get there? Absolutely. But it's going to take exactly 
what you said, Mary, and just putting our heads together and putting a strategic program plan to make that all work. We are small. I mean, we're talking, you know, the goal is 100 girls. I mean, we should be that school on CNN saying, you know, we are public, but we operate as if we're private and, you know, be that echelon school. I'm, I'm all in for that. And I do believe wholeheartedly, and my staff will tell you that we will become that because we're already taking steps there. I can introduce you to, we're starting with our, um, to be honest, our freshman and our sophomore base, because we're getting different types of students. Like our seniors are already grown. They're just, they're grown, their minds made up and I can't really change them the way I want to in the next six months. But our freshman base is exactly what Mary is what we will lead up to with the type of program that you have because we have students that have that mindset and they can do it. And if we model it, instill it, and we have it set and ready to go, I can see that very well happening and being successful, being very successful. So, so please, um, I'm hoping we can connect to maybe even get just a, a goal on paper to see what does this look like and how can we make that happen? even if it's just for our freshmen, our sophomores next year. Because I, I don't want to do the whole, like, I'm a baby steps person. I want to make sure it's successful with a small group. So even if we just focus, like, I, I know I keep saying freshmen because that's our, our strategy this year. Um, and we have some really good, uh, and even our sophomores, we have some really good sophomores this year too. Um, that I know what you're talking about would be a great fit if we can make that happen. And, and Mary, that's a fabulous idea. I know they did that somewhere um, when I used to live in LA. Uh, I don't know where the funds came from, but we would get uh, what we'd call, uh, you know, young ladies from disadvantaged backgrounds who would come in to another time I was working for uh, Kaiser. And, you know, one of the things that wasn't just teaching them a skill, number one, we were exposing them to a work environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the conversation I had to have with my little mentee was, no, you probably shouldn't be wearing that skirt that's like, you know, 10 inches from your knees mm -hmm. in this environment. Um, we need to look a little bit more professional, mm -hmm. you know, and though those conversations coming from, uh, you know, someone of, of my age at the time, it sort of, it made sense to her and it was done in a very uh, safe environment. It's like, okay, now you're being exposed to the computers and, you know, answering phones so that you can basic little skill sets that you normally wouldn't get. So I mean, maybe that's an, something for our, our organization to look into. You know, we're always giving that when we're doing scholarships is maybe like an internship type of scholarship um, where someone could go into someone's office and, you know, be exposed that way. So that's, that would be great. Um, Darlene, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, I, I do, and, and that sort of leads into it. We, we are going to have a planning session before too long, and I, I think I was going to ask how could we, um, should we start looking at, at um, some interaction with the lower grades, um, you know, not, nothing particular, but this is, this is a, this is a good idea, Mary, I'm, I'm excited. And I wanted to just say to Connie, um, I've been in Seroptimus for seven years, I guess, and this is the most worthwhile thing, I think, that I've been part of, and um, your willingness to um, let us play with the girls and hopefully inspire the girls and take on new challenges with the girls has just been an inspiration to me going forward, and I just want to go on record as thanking you for um, making my experience and my life better every time I go over there. So, Thank you, Darlene. You're welcome. Oh. And you can make her cry really easily. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's about to make me cry. So we're going to be crying together. <laughs> no, I, I, I do hope um, those of you who haven't had a chance to come, please come through, meet some of our girls. and. <sighs> I how, many, I'm sorry. how many seniors do you have this year graduating oh paula where are we at 20 <laughs> that number oh. 
somewhere between 20 and 24. Because yeah. uh, um, some of the girls might graduate early or like, I know at least yeah. one of the girls came was here last year, but is finishing up this year. And I'm not well, sure she's staying for the whole year, but we yeah. did lose Victoria. So I think we're at 20 now because this is an example, ladies. Victoria, again, they want that fast track. She didn't have enough credits. She wouldn't graduate in May. So then they just, they start scrambling. I'm going to graduate. And they think going to a different um, school that's a credit recovery school, they think they're going to get out faster and they're not. And so she's, she's no longer with us because she thinks that's going to happen somewhere else. She would have been a December graduate and they just, they're impatient because they want that fast, you know, life. And they see what's on TV. They see all that. They just want that overnight. And um, anyhow, uh, those are the type of another just experiences that we are unfortunate to have to um, endure, even though we, we fall hard for our girls and we want them to stay. But, yeah, either some come back or some just, they drop out. Yes. Go. Yeah. Sorry, I had to find my mute. <laughs> um, Dr. Jordan, um, hi. Uh, could, could we, if we're Arizona taxpayers, make the public school tax credit donation to the American Leadership Academy? Yes, absolutely. Uh, eligible? Yep. Right. I've done it to other schools in the past, but I, this is a public school. It'd be good to do it to instead. Thank you. Thank you. Please come it's visit. Awesome, right? That would be... I don't know. I, 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 I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, I was just saying we could all do that. If is um, it, you know, to, I know some people probably have pet schools they like, but to the extent you don't have a pet school you like, it's it, that's just costs you nothing, and is automatic donation to the academy, mm -hmm. and you know, a couple hundred dollars, I think, or four hundred maybe for married people mm -hmm. um, each. So that would be a good donation source maybe this group and thank you and i and i and i say this very respectfully we use every penny of it and we let you know how we use it and i really want you to come see the school even you know so you can see where and how your funds are being used so definitely thank you for sharing that Does anybody have any uh, questions or issues they'd like to discuss on education? Everybody's already thinking of Thanksgiving. I know that's where everybody's mind is at right now. <laughs> Lori, did you have something? I was just excited about Mary's proposal, and I think it's a perfect fit for our organization and, and GLAS. And I think that um, if we put our heads together, we can come up with internships in all kinds of industries. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've got Tammy, aren't you um, connected with Valley Leadership? Um, and, you know, we can pull them in. And um, I think that, I think we can make something happen. So I think we need to put that, write it down in pen and put it on our agenda and let's get it, let's make that happen. And, and 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 I can say this, even if obviously the internship would be for our seniors, but just to know that our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors know that's coming, mm -hmm. you know, that's that there's vision there. And um, I know I, I refer to Paula a lot because I see her the most. Um, you saw the growth of this junior group now, seniors, right? Versus what we had last year. And uh, I think what well, if we had this program in place, these these would have been some good students to be in some type of internship um, if we had something like that in place right now. Because, you know, just Selena Greer alone, Paula, just some of our students who are very articulate and, you know, um, mm -hmm. we um, she's our valedictorian for our school. We have we do have some bright girls and I just see that program definitely being a benefit. So even if our younger students can know that that opportunity is coming would be a win. Great. 
Thank you. Um, just last call for anybody, if there's any questions now, and if there is, please feel free to, uh, you know, email me and then I can always forward them on um, to Dr. Jordan. Um, and, you know, like she noted, a lot of people have been participating in the program. And if you haven't been participating in the program, I know for me, it's usually a scheduling issue, but now that, you know, the way you've discussed it, uh, Dr. Jordan, I'm going to email you and see how I can come by the school one day um, and tell my story of, you know, being a poor little Mexican child um, in school. Um, if nobody has any questions, thank you very much. Oh, Darlene, okay. Darlene has you go, Darlene. Just a, a good opportunity um, out of the goodness of their heart and our enthusiasm, we are going to have our holiday party at school uh, for, gee, I think two hours instead of one hour, if I'm right. So that's a good opportunity to um, come over and, and and meet some of the girls and do it in a in a crafty and fun kind of way. So I encourage you, we, we do try to keep the numbers down for helpers so we don't outnumber the girls, but um, I think we're, I think we'll, we would love to see some new faces there. What day is that, Darlene? Um, I'm gonna say the 20, what is it? The 20th, the 20th of December. It's a Tuesday and I think it's from eight to 10, 10 30, something like that. Something like that. December 20th. And is it already on our website? Is that, is that something that yeah. people are registering yeah. for? Or how are you are you doing register? Oh yes, Mary said yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I thought I had come through, uh, but I wanted to make sure. Okay, so December 20th, Tuesday, 8 to 10 a.m. You can go to our website and register if you're able to make it. They're, you're trying to keep your numbers low. Um, and before we head out, uh, our next program meeting is actually our holiday party. Um, it is December 15th from 12 to 1. It is going to be held in the social room of um, Julie Bice's condominium, which is right next to the Heard Museum. Uh, more information forthcoming. Uh, but if you're interested in that on that day, also go to the website. So you see two different things, both amazing website. That is a place to be. And if you haven't paid your dues, because I'm thinking like the old treasure, I'm sure Lori would appreciate this. You can pay your dues as well. So bam, bam, bam. Oh, and Paula has something to say. One more thing. Um, since we're meeting in person for a holiday party, if there is a drive that would help the school, like whether it's socks or, I know the girls have talked to me about how expensive feminine hygiene products are, or um, if it's uniforms, I, I, whatever it is, I'll get together with, with Dr. Jordan and maybe since we're gonna meet in person, if there's a drive or something we can do to help, we could bring those to the holiday party and um, uh, we can help the school in that way. And then I also wanted, to, um, Tammy is, has also arranged a tour of State Farm for the girls. And I think we're gonna get there about nine o'clock and go through lunch. <laughs> and, but Tammy is going to put together um, different careers and different speakers from State Farm. So it might be HR, technology, you know, not just some insurance folks, but, mm. but beyond that to let people know what careers are there as well. So awesome. thank you. And I love the drive idea. I think Mary did this a couple of years ago, back when we were in real, real person, real live, our meetings. For some reason, I recollect uh, poor Mary had a whole corner of, of items for a drive that we did for one of our holiday parties, which was awesome. A lot right there, travel size liquid soap is a high need. So if you could get some of those some of those needs to, to Paula, sure. um, Dr. Jordan, I know myself, like if someone sends me an Amazon wish list, I just go, boom, there it is. That's how I work because it's just easier yeah. for me. Uh, but if you can get together or just send that information to her, we can send that out as part of our holiday party invite. Uh, we always like to do something, you know, out of the goodness of our heart where people can donate something. Um, and so this would be a great opportunity for people. But thank you so much for, you know, taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. I know yeah. it sounds like it's an emotionally exhausting experience. <laughs> um, as someone who has children, I get it. And, you know, this is even more because you have, you have, these are all your children. They are. Um, I can barely deal with the ones I have. So God bless you. Thank um, you. But everybody else, if you have any questions or issues, concerns, please email um, Tammy or myself. Um, if not, we will see you at the next meeting. Are there any other announcements since we have this, you know, crowd right now?
No? All right. Everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.